Hey viewers, in this video I'm going to show you this cool uh, contact RPM tachometer, Swiss made. I picked this up at the surplus store, just like the uh, other odd antique motor. I've uh, only seen one other contact RPM meter and it was nothing like this. This is very well made. I don't have the rubber piece for it that uh, is on the end that actually touches like whatever you're rotating to give you a reading. It was calibrated November 17th, 09. It's uh, range is quite interesting the way you uh, pick it. I've already had one of these apart and I'll uh, try and take one apart again for the purposes of this video but they're very hard to get back together. It's got a whole gear transmission under this black cap and um, like all things Swiss made that I know of uh, the gears are brass and very high precision. And when you want to pick the RPM range, like for here, 30 to 120, so you'd be looking at the outside numbers, so that would be 30, and over here would be 120. And if you need something higher, you just rotate the whole top, so that's 100 to 400. So in this case, you're looking at the inside number, that'd be 100, and over here would be 400. And again, for the next one up, so now you're back to the outside number, just adding an extra zero, so 300, and that would be ending at 1200. And then you're back to the inside, adding another zero, 1000 to 4000. And finally, you're back to the outside numbers, adding two more zeros, 3,000 to 12,000. Um, one of the really interesting things I found about this is the rotation of this shaft does not matter. It can be clockwise or counterclockwise, and it will not damage this. I'll just stick this little fan blade on here just so I can rotate it and show you better. So I got it on its lowest setting, so clockwise. Now if I rotate the other way, so it doesn't matter what the rotation is, it will not damage this. It works in either way. And I'll show you how it does that when we uh, open it up and take a look inside. Let's see if I rotate this one more, I'm going to turn this much faster to get the dial to go up the same amount. I'll uh, demonstrate this on a few motors just to uh, give you a better idea. Okay, so we got this synchronous motor here and according to my according to my non-contact tachometer 1770 RPMs. This is just uh, something I had to use since the rubber piece on here is missing. That'll be the uh, actual uh, contact point for this. So I'm just going to basically push it against here just to make the shaft on the uh, RPM meter rotate. So I got to I got to select its range. So between 1,000 and 4,000. And that's right on. 1,770. 
Now this dishwasher motor You can see that 3,500 3,550 So well, again, the same same range. Right on the mark. Now if you want to check something with a much higher RPMs, say this Edison motor, which according to this tachometer it's being a little hard to get a proper reading, there we go 11,300 11,360 so to do that Switch to there. It's slowing down just a little bit. And that's probably pretty, pretty close. So next up I'll uh, open it up and show you the mechanics. Alright, I've taken the cover off, taking the little screws out, the face plate off. A little bit of writing on the back. Must be a production number or something. And underneath, you've got this cool piece of Swiss engineering. I've never seen anything quite like it before. So when I when I rotate this, see this whole thing under here spins. And those four round cylinders, two right there and two right there, they're weights. And as this spins up, you can see the centrifugal force pushes them out. And there must be some kind of mechanism down in the center shaft there that pushes pushes this shaft right here, this little or this little rod, and makes this here part turn. So if I turn this by hand, you can see. You can see that that moves in and out. And when I do that, you can see that this part here moves with it. So it's all interconnected. And that's really neat. I've never seen anything like this before. Quite ingenious. So, like say, about... Uh, doesn't matter which way the shaft is rotating, clockwise or counterclockwise. Because for this, centrifugal force is just centrifugal force. So that's one way. And then the other way. Still pushes those 
those weights out and it causes the dial to move. So I'll put the dial back on it. Which isn't really easy to do, so you can, can't really see here. So if I hook this back up to this motor, let's see if I can... So I'm just making the motor go slow right now. So you can see at this speed, at 100, 100 to 400 RPMs, it's pretty much maxing out, maxing out the uh, speed of this part. So if I switch this to a faster one, you're changing your gears. And if I switch it again, You see it's not even close to maxing it out, but if I increase the motor speed, and finally it's fast, it's highest setting, so I have to really crank the motor up here. So you see the only thing that's actually changing is a gear ratio, which I'll get to that part next. This, this part in here is always turning the same range of uh, speed. I don't know what the actual RPM speed is on the this part, but it doesn't change. The only thing that changes is the gear ratios in this part here, which I will uh, attempt to get to right now. Right underneath the black cover piece you've got your uh, spring with your ball bearing not sure why there's the flat part there but that's where your uh, notches are for your selection for each one and then under here that's where your transmission is I'll get to that next all right, I've got the screws out. Let's see if I can get this thing apart. And there you have it. Here's your transmission. So I'll get to that part in just a moment. So when you turn, when you're turning this part here, you can see there's a pin that goes through here and through the back part and that's what's rotating and when you're doing that you're actually rotating this whole piece in here and when you turn your center shaft you're also turning that little gear there and when you turn when you're turning this whole part here when you're turning this whole part right here, each time you turn it, you're actually it's actually engaging with different gears. So, for example, this here might be 30 to 120 RPMs. This here might be 100 to 400. Uh, 300 to 1,200. Um, 1,000 to 4,000 and 3,000 to 12,000. Now I'm not sure which one's which, but you get the idea. So if I if I go ahead and try and turn this one here, 
Well, that must that must be your 30 to 120 because when you see this, see your center gear down inside there is not turning very much at all. But if I come over to this one, see if I can make it turn. Maybe I can make this one turn. You can see it's turning much faster. Which is kind of a kind of an ingenious design to uh, give you your different RPM ranges. The center shaft always has the same center gear always has the same RPM range, which goes into there to turn your dial. But what you're, what you're actually changing out here is which which gear this little one here engages with. So, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a uh, cool Swiss-made engineering. I don't. I've taken apart a lot of things in uh, my life, and uh, there's still things that uh, surprise me. Anyway, thanks for watching.